Hey everyone, Igor here from Velo Orange, and today we are not going to be working on a brand new bicycle. We are going to be working on my bicycle because it needs a little bit of an overhaul, and we're going to be installing the new MicroShift Sword system onto it. So let's go take a look at the fun stuff first, the MicroShift stuff, and then we'll get to taking my bike apart and seeing what it needs. And here we have the new MicroShift. 2x10 sword drivetrain. Now, who is this for? I would say tourists, commuters, gravel riders. Um, I don't think you're going to see a lot of super, you know, racing, lightweight, weight weenie type people riding it. I mean, I'm not going to put it on a scale because it's a, it can't compare to carbon cranks. It can't compare to, you know, the super lightweight stuff out there, but it is solid. I'm really digging it. Feels really good in the hand. Um, arrow cable routing, one button on the bottom increases cable tension, the other one decreases, they both move, which is nice, depending on what situation you're in. These cranks are 4831 tooth with a Holotex spline, two piece, the nice uh, recess in the back, clutch rear derailleur. Feels really good. Uh, cassette is an 11.38, so lots of climbing gear. And uh, the front derailleur. Front derailleur is alive and well. Uh, Microshift was kind enough to send this to us for uh, to see how it would work on our on our bikes. And um, they included this one, which is a Brazon, but I have a little SRAM um, adapter. Uh, we'll have to do a little bit of filing. Don't tell MicroShift uh, and don't tell SRAM, but we'll have to do a little bit of modification because this little guy here kind of touches the, the um, backside of the derailleur, so we'll just file that away. And there's some other little goodies here that we'll get to in time. So here's my bike. It's a large polyvalent low kicker. It pretty much does probably 80% of my riding. Everything else can be done by either Neutrino or Pass Hunter or some other upcoming fun things we have. Um, it has granola mousse bars, which we will be taking off. It has a Sensa 1x11 drivetrain. It works really well. Um, it has a prototype rear rack. It has fenders and lots of little reflectors. It has integrated lighting. There's a dynamo hub from, I believe this is Shutter Precision. Yep, Shutter Precision dynamo. And a, I don't even know where I got this light. I think I got this from a Taiwan Expo note a number of years ago. And it is just good enough. It is good enough. And it has these. This is what we're calling our gibbous cage. These are a side loading cage for Nalgene bottles. And one up top and a crescent cage down at the bottom. So this tire is good. I think it has like 35 PSI and this one maybe has 3.5 PSI. So let's get that taken care of and then we'll mount up the uh, MicroShift group. Rear wheel coming off. I guess while we're here, we can just start taking off the drivetrain and everything. And here comes our fancy handy dandy chain breaker. Comes in orange. All right. I know the chain is worn out, so it needs to be thrown away anyway. For a millimeter to loosen the cable. We'll keep the cable cherry though. Five millimeter on the derailleur. Derailleur off. Let's get that crank set and bottom bracket off. Eight millimeter. Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. Woo. That was a tight one. There's a self-extracting cap. 
So it's going to take off the drive side, and then we'll take off the non-drive side afterwards. Bottom bracket tool, take off the bottom bracket. Ah, okay. That one's loose. Spin it clockwise for removal, since it's English threaded. Ugh, woo, it's tight. Drive side out, non-drive side coming out now. Next, we're gonna undo the brakes, three millimeter to loosen the cable. I just scratched my frame. That's okay. It's patina. Ah! Another high gravity day today, isn't it, folks? Same on the front. Now, usually I would try to reuse cables and housing, but going from drop bar to flat bar, all of the lengths of cables and housing is different, so. You can't really reuse it. Maybe for a different project, but not for this particular, not for this particular uh, change housing out. And we're gonna remove the housing from the rear brake as well. I'll save this housing cap though, it's brass. Those always patina really nicely and they last a super long time. And rear railer. Hang on to those caps. All right, now we can remove the bag and take the handlebars off. Now that everything's free, five millimeter on both sides. Now, with um, going from these granola mousse bars, the equivalent stem length is about 100 millimeters. It's hard to kind of exactly gauge what that means, but basically from, from here to about here is around 100 millimeters. So I'm gonna be running a drop bar, so that means that my overall position is gonna be longer. So I'm gonna bring it back. I'm gonna be using um, an 80 millimeter. So let's give that a go. Five millimeter on each side. And a five millimeter for the top cap. off. These are going the parts bin stem and top cap back on so we don't lose anything so the fork doesn't fall out. We'll do a little bit of a light preload first. Tighten down the stem just a little bit. Face plate coming off, and then we're gonna put the handlebars on. And with the shape of the Nouveau Rando bars and a lot of modern bars nowadays, you used to be able to get away with just kind of snaking the handlebar through here, but not with modern bars. You gotta take the face plate off. I tried it, I tried it off camera, so I know. Ah. It's okay to drop things sometimes. Now the key is when you drop something, you might think you're trying to be like a magician or Spider-Man by trying to kick it and catch it or something like that. But instead, if you drop it, look where it goes. Because if you kick it, you might kick it behind a bench or across the garage or across the shop. So instead of trying to catch it, look where it goes. You'll save yourself a lot of time and headache. And when you're tightening down threadless stems, unless the uh, manufacturer says otherwise, make sure that and you can do it by feel that the gap between the stem and the faceplate is the same on the top and on the bottom. 
So otherwise you can lead to uh, stress fractures. And then tighten it down in a kind of star pattern. That's pretty good. We'll get the final tightening later. Shifters going on. Just like pretty much every other, except Campy, for whatever reason, this uh, uses a five millimeter to loosen up the clamp, slide it over the bars. Sometimes you need to loosen a little bit more. And I'll, I'll preface this, I have not worked on this. I only watched the installation video for the front derailleur because it's a little bit different than usual, but it seems pretty normal, all in all. Five millimeter, tighten it down. I leave it a little bit loose just for the ability to give you adjustments later. Let's bring it up just a little bit. And then let's see, let's take the rubber hoods down and see where it's going to live. You wanna have a nice transition from the ramps to the hoods. And that looks really good. So we'll tighten it down right there. Careful not to move it too much. And snug it down. There we go. Looks really good. So here's what I'm talking about with these levers. When you're riding, you can pull this guy closer to you. If you're in the drops, that's helpful to increase tension. And then with this one, you can move it as well to decrease tension, which is, it's a nice feature. So increases tension and then decreases tension. And it's nice. These are like rubberized little pads. This one's just plastic, but this one's rubberized. And copy and paste on the other side. Rear derailleur going on. A little bit of grease on that derailleur bolt. Find your five millimeter. kind of hard to see, but you want to make sure that this tab here lines up with the end of the derailleur hanger here. All right, rear derailleur officially on. That's a nice clutch. It's not too heavy, not too soft. This is nice. It has a little bit of an orbital cable housing end cap. Nice detents. Looks really easy to install. Now we're going to install the bottom bracket. This bike, you might not be able to see it on camera, but it's pretty gross. So let's clean out what's already in there. Blech. Bottom bracket grease. Bottom bracket grease. Let's see, should we do the right or the left cup first? Left cup it is. Now Will from Microshift supplied me with a Shimano bottom bracket. I'm assuming that Microshift has their own as well, but this is what he sent me. So that means that this is a hollow tech tooth style spindle. So that's 24 millimeter, very normal. I like that this one's silver. So we'll go almost all the way and then drive side. Drive side going in and tighten counterclockwise. Finish up with a non drive side. Uh, and dri non drive side is clockwise to tighten. And will somebody please, please, please tell me why Shimano needs two tools the bigger one for road and the smaller one for mountain? Why? Why? Shimano, I expect an answer. Good and tight. And drive side is good and tight. Drive side going in this is a two piece style, hollow tech style. So drive side goes in, and then the non drive side arm attaches to it. Non drive side crank arm going on. I like this tool though. This tool is really nice. No play and it's smooth. One thing you'll hear people say with uh, brand new bottom brackets 
and hubs is, oh, there's so much drag. Well, what it is, it, well, yes, you're not wrong. There is more drag when they're brand new because the grease needs needs time to get to all the bearings and needs time to settle into where it's going to live for a while. And it's usually a lot more grease than necessary. So we did the preload. Now we have two five millimeter screws. Let's cinch everything down. Alternate torque. Honestly, I kind of dig it. It's definitely more modern compared to, uh, some of the other stuff I've run on my bikes, but I kind of dig it. It would be even better if it was silver. Just saying, if it was silver, I'd be camped out first in line. Let's get this uh, tire off so we can see what's going on with that. I think it's probably just low sealant. Let's get the rest of the air out. Let's pop the bead, see what we're working with. Now, oh yeah, the sealant is like 100% dried up. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to remove the tire, take out the old sealant, and put in the new sealant. Look at that glitter. It's like green. Looks really cool. I don't think there's a lick of sealant in here. I've just been riding on hopes and dreams, really. Where did it go? I don't know. There's like no sealant in here. Oh, it's very dry. I mean, you can see how it's like crumbling. The other thing you want to make sure is to check the rim strip. This one's fine. Just has glittery sealant all over it. You want to check that overlap. This one's fine. I'm not really losing air out of that. I think it's probably coming out of the sidewalls and stuff like that. Let's get the cassette off. No, it doesn't go that way. It doesn't feel right. Yeah, it goes like this. Chain whip. The big wrench. Old cassette off. All right, let's get the cassette on. Make sure you line up all the splines. It's a Shimano spline, so it makes it really easy. Cross compatible with a ton of stuff. It's an 1138, so I think it has a really nice range. We'll see if we need the little spacer that goes behind. Let's see if we need it. Which one's next? So that's 21, 19. Shim, 17, shim, 15, 13, 11, the lock ring. Let's see. Ugh, get some get the dog hair out of there. I think we're going to need a shim, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see. Oh, no, it's tight. So tool and the big wrench, good and tight. If it needed a shim, You'd be able to grab this and it would wobble a whole bunch, but it's nice and solid. Ultra Dynamico tire going back on. Make sure you line up the logo with the valve stem. You gotta look pro. Make yourself a little table. All right. Now we're gonna put the ceiling in. Now we're gonna blast it. First thing we need to do is take out the valve core, and I can't find a valve core remover tool that will work, so I'm just going to use these pliers. I feel like for me, tubeless is a love-hate relationship, because sometimes it's great. You hear a little bit of a and then it seals up and you can keep riding. You don't have to worry about it. Other times, it's the maintenance that's kind of annoying. All right, valve core is out. Let's get blasted. Now I'm using an air compressor because we have it, but you could just as easily use one of those uh, pumps that have a chamber. That's what we often use as well. So here we go. Woo! You hear that? 
means it's seated, it's holding air nicely. And when I let go of this, there's no valve core, so the air is just going to be coming, come rushing out. And what we're doing is just making sure that the tire seats all around the wheel. Well, inspection, seated nicely, so now we can put in the sealant. All right, we're going to use some stand sealant. Put the injector onto the valve. Why aren't you threading correctly? There we go. Onto the valve. And according to stands, according to stand, it takes uh, for a 48 millimeter tire, we're going to use two to three ounces. I'm going to go with three. So let's see. Where does that where does that put us? So we're going to use basically one and a half injectors. And it goes. That's two ounces. Careful not to get this stuff all over the place because it is a pain to get out. Make sure you're wearing clothes that you do not care about. One and a little bit more going in. So that's that. Valve core going back in. I like to put a little bit of grease on the threads of the core just so that Next time we have to do this, it's not so difficult to take the core out. I've seen it where it's futile and you just have to change the core if it gets too gunked up. But in this case, because I did it before, it was not so bad. Fresh air going in. That's 35 PSI. Now we get to do our silly tubeless dance. All right, this is important. Uh, whew. So basically what we're doing is distributing the sealant all on the inside, all over where the tread is, the sidewalls, everywhere. Let's see if you can hear it. That's the sealant at the bottom and you gotta move it around to distribute it everywhere. So what we have is a Brazon style front derailleur. And our bike does not have a Brazon mount. So we have this adapter. This is from some SRAM front derailleur, um, but there's a little bit of interference right here. There's a little protrusion. Now they do make this derailleur in a, in a uh, clamp on, but I just didn't get that one. So we're going to shave this guy down to make a little bit more room. It's aluminum, so it's, I mean, it's really easy. And then what we can do is afterwards, we can come back if we really want to. Well, first we gotta make it look a little nicer. Um, well, we'll come back and maybe we'll put a little bit of a Sharpie on it or something like that. And there's a couple, there's several companies that make something similar to this. Problem Solvers makes one. I, I'm sure Microshift has one too, but this is easy, I have it. So let's see how it fits. Oh, that's much better. So that's what we'll go with. We'll put a little bit of Sharpie on it. It's like that uh, that meme, right? How will they know? They'll never know. Clamp adapter going on. Okay. Now let's get it on the bike. Ah, oh, I need another shim. So in order to find the shims, I had to go deep dive through our parts shifting stash where I actually found a bunch of adapters. So we didn't have to do that, but hey, whatever. Now I know they're there. And I don't have to uh, search all over the shop for them. So that just means never throw anything away. Front derailleur with shims going on. It's kind of weird having to do this with you guys watching because I have to make sure that I'm not blocking anything. Otherwise, what's the point? If I'm just standing in front of it, I never see anything. Front derailleur on. 
All right, so let's get the rear wheel in so we can adjust the angle of the hoods on the handlebar. Grease on the through axle. All right, well, that's just no good. I mean, they're tilted all the way up here. So let's adjust the handlebars down first. So I don't torque these guys down until the very end. Ah, much better. Now we're going to adjust the hood angle. Now, this feels really good as it is, but once you put the tape on here, there's going to be a bump here, and it's actually going to visually appear like these are too low. So what I like to do is bring these up just a little bit, tilt it up just a tiny bit, so that when you have the tape on the bars, this transition from the ramp to the hood is very smooth. Five millimeter back here. And we're going to do the same on the other side so we can get these dialed in at the same time. The hood's back down. So we can adjust these at the same time. That feels pretty good. Careful not to jostle them too much now that you have them in the right place. And five millimeter to tighten them back up. This one's still a little high. There we go. Feels good to me. And while we have the bike on the ground, this is a good opportunity to straighten the stem out in relation to the front wheel. Ha! Kick! Whip out your laser eyes. Get it. Just right. Ha. All right, back in the stand with you. Get your braking and shifting all buttoned up. I've had a few people ask about if it's okay to clamp frames in your stand. The answer is no. So do as I say, not as I do. Basically, this particular section here is very strong. Not only do you have the thicker material of this length of the seat tube, but you also have the actual seat post that goes probably to about here. Um, I wouldn't clamp it on the top tube. I wouldn't clamp it anywhere else. And if it was a, a, a customer's bike, I wouldn't do this either. But it's my bike, so there you have it. Rear housing going in, and it's going to go into here and go all the way through the tube that's brazed in all the way. And here it comes out. No searching, no fumbling. I'm using a brass housing cap and pull it through and into the brake caliper. So now we're going to find that graceful bend for the rear housing. So how about that? That looks pretty good. And yes, I do route my housing from the back to the front. And somebody on some obscure fixie forum called me out for it, called me a monster. But that's how I do it. I'm not going to say their name, but they know who they are. So we're going to cut it right here. Cable cutters. Cut it. Looks pretty good. I'm going to open it up with this all. Now these appear that they don't need housing cap. So it's just going to go straight in there. Cable going in. Get in there. Pull it all the way through. Cable into the housing. Push that all the way through. Push the cable through and make sure it comes out at the caliper. There we go. I'm actually going to bring the brake pads in just a tad. Three millimeter on this side. That's good. And then 
three millimeter on this side. Much better. And just to bring, just do some very fine adjustments. I'm going to use this barrel adjuster to really dial in that lever feel. Feels good. Let's finish up this rear cable. And cable crimp. And copy and paste on the front. 10 speed chain going on. I'm using the some C chain because it's pretty good and cheap. Wrap the chain around the upper pulley and then through this little tab in the cage around the lower pulley. And right now it is in small, small. Let's see how many links we need to get rid of here. I'd say two pairs of links should do the trick. So right there is where we're going to cut it. The park tool chain tool was missing a piece. So I'm going to use this ancient one that I have, which still works nicely. Well, it still works. I'll put it that way. Okay. Quick link. Take the chain off the front chain ring. Okay, get them ready. Run it through until the quick link is at the top. There it is. And now we're gonna put the bike on the ground. And from here, all you should have to do is grab the rear brake and push on the crank set to set the quick link in place. Let's set our high limit screw for the rear derailleur. Make sure that the cage is in line with the highest cog, three millimeter here. Well, that looks pretty good to me. Now we're gonna set our low limit screw. So just push the derailleur until it's where it needs to live. Ah, too far. There we are. Okay, low limit screw clockwise. There we are, that's as far as it needs to go. And we'll do the final adjustments when we have cables all hooked up. But here, everything's working. Now I'm going to adjust the angle of this derailleur and the height. It needs to come down a little bit and then it's kind of hard to, I wish I could put you guys in the right position, but oftentimes you have to view parallel to the frame and there's just no room for a camera. So you're just gonna have to trust me on this one. And tighten down the clamp. Three millimeter to set the low limit screw, which is the most inboard one. So that it is just not touching the inner part of that chain. Perfect. Right there. Good. Now we're going to measure the housing for the rear shifter. Remember graceful bends too sharp of curves introduces a lot of friction. And now that we know that this side is good, we can just take that same side, compare it to the length that we already have to the long length and just snip it right there so that the housing is Symmetrical. So the cable goes in here and it comes out right on top here. For your housing routing, it's going to go like this behind the brake housing. Housing routed to the shifter. End cap already on. Insert. And insert the other end of the housing into its home on the shifter and copy and paste on the other side. Now, because this derailleur uses this integrated housing stop here, I can't take it out. Um, 
I can't use the metallic stuff because it is uh, five millimeters as opposed to four millimeters. So we're just going to use regular black here, you know, say la vie. It's okay. It still looks nice. So we're going to put this guy right here. That looks good. Cut it. Housing cap. At least it's brass housing cap. Insert to the housing stop. There we go. Run the cable under the bottom bracket shell and insert into the housing, making sure it comes out. There we go. Route the cable through the channel. It's a four millimeter. Loosen that up a little bit. Route the cable through the channel. Okay. Put a little tension on it. Tighten it down. Ah! And let's see how we did. Oh, so far so good. Did we nail it first try? Oh, look at that. Shifting is nice. It's pretty smooth. Maybe a little tiny bit more tension on the cable, but I mean, that's pretty solid right there. And the distance from the cage to the cassette in the lowest gear is spot on too. So I'm pretty happy with that. Cut the cable. Cable crimp. Rear derailleur done. Now let's work on the front. All right, so for the front derailleur, we might do something a little bit differently than I think Microshift wants us to do. Because this front derailleur has an extra piece basically here, and I'll show you on the underside. That screw adjusts the cable tension by pushing the housing it's pretty it's pretty clever um, and it basically does away with the inline adjuster if your bike has full length housing but since the polyvalent does not have full length housing and it does in fact have a housing stop this is our adjuster and here's that piece from the bottom so there's that housing stop and the housing stop goes there and the cable comes out but since we're not using that we're going to see if we can route this traditionally and see if it still works fine all right, I had to do some fiddling with it, but I got it in a pretty good spot. Shifts well. It's a little bit non-traditional in some ways, but if you've worked on front derailleurs before, it's, um, it's not that big of a deal. So here's the routing for that front derailleur. Pretty tidy. Looks good. Shifts well. What can I say? Now we're going to wrap the bars. So we're going to use our electrical tape. And kind of like to candy cane it around the bars. Like so. Keep the housing two bars. And scissors. Let's tape those bars. I chose our rubbery brown because this is my favorite bar tape that we have. Super cushy. It looks great. It's very comfortable in uh, mixed terrain conditions. Little guy right here. Look, I'm not a I'm not a rapper. I am an okay rapper. So. Is my technique different than other people? Perhaps. Oh, went the wrong way. All right, let's get to wrapping. Now, one thing you do need to make sure with this rubbery tape is that, I don't know if you can see it, you wrap it so that the dots are on this side of the tape. So as you're wrapping, going up this, it overlaps on the part that is undotted. Am I a professional rapper? No. Can I do it adequately? Adequately? Yes, definitely. You know, there are some some people out there that really have their specialties and what they like on different parts of bicycles. I really like wheels. I like building wheels. And there are some people that are really, really into wrapping bars. All right, now we're going to go over and around. And Cut 
right here. All right, now we're gonna cut the tape going towards the stem at an angle. There we are. Where's my tape? And around. And cut. Done. And copy and paste on the other side. Pedals, pedal washers, and some grease on the threads. Something I just realized is that these are actually prototype Sobo pedals. And I can tell because these have an eight millimeter on the back as opposed to the six. And these are so smooth. I mean, just look at this. These are great. And same thing on the non-drive side. Now remember that the non-drive side is opposite threaded. So pedals are left and right specific. All right, here we are. Microshift 2x10 sword system installed. We fixed the rear wheel leak with some fresh sealant. And now this thing is ready to ride. So let's go. All right. First ride out with the new Microsoft Sword Group on the polyvalent. Ooh, it feels good. It's been a minute since I had drop bars on my bike. I've been running crazy bars or sane bars or granola mousse bars. And putting the drops back on just feels good. Why have I put so many bars on my bike? Well, it's a fairly inexpensive and easy way to completely change the feel of your ride. You know, going from different positions. And you know what they say, change your bars, change your life. This is where we're going to end the video. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. That'd be awesome. In the meantime, happy riding.